Broadcasting live from SHRM 2022 at the New Orleans Convention Center, it's time for Workplace MVP, brought to you by R3 Continuum, a global leader in helping workplaces thrive during disruptive times. Now, here's your host. Hi, everyone. Your host, Jamie Gassman, here, and we are coming to you from SHRM 2022's Exhibit Hall, and I am sitting in R3 Continuum, our show sponsor's booth, and with me is Denise Pratt. Welcome to the show, Denise. Awesome. Thanks for having me. So, Denise, share with me who, you're, who, you're, uh, who you work with okay. and a little bit about your background in HR. Okay. Um, I work for David Rains Community Health Center. We are a federally qualified health care center throughout northwest Louisiana. Um, we offer medical, dental, and behavioral health services throughout uh, about five, well, about to enter into a sixth city, in five cities at this time, um, for schools or communities of the underserved rural areas. Um, as far as myself, getting into HR, I was one of those I went to school for something completely different. I'll tell you what it was because it's funny we're doing this. I went to school for mass communications originally. Ah, (laughs) And um, while I was um, in school for mass communications, I took a class. It was like the heart of an institution or heart of an organization. And it really resonated with me and made me want to jump into HR. Um, And at that time, I was working my way up in banking. And I didn't know I was doing HR when I was doing HR, like I was doing orientation, I was doing training and development, I was doing um, t- development and talent recruiting and attending recruitment events for them or whatever was needed and didn't know that was HR until I started learning more into HR because I just thought, as most people think, HR is just for hiring and firing individuals. <laughs> it did not involve all the other avenues of HR. Um, and so kind of just worked my way up into an HR role. I did break away for 10 months and then I said, no, I really like HR. Got back in there specializing in training and develop, uh, training and development specialist. Uh, worked my way up into governmental agency, uh, where I worked my way up from an entry level to their assistant director of human resources. Um, once I hit that that glass ceiling at that organization where I could not no longer progress or grow or it became um, kind of like a habitual pattern of, oh, this is my day. I'm just doing this. I felt mm-hmm. I needed to grow and develop a little bit more. Um, and that's where I ended up at uh, David Rains Community Health Center. It's still kind of on that same lines of being a public servant, just not technically a public servant, because we do serve a lot of the underserved, underpopulated rural area communities and I help in that way by bringing the workers to those areas and so making sure I'm on top of that recruitment and making sure people want to work at our organization to continue in that mission. Oh I love that and I mean isn't like I mean I've got to imagine that some of the classes you took in in mass communications has got to help in HR because I think there is a lot of communications that goes on in HR. I will honestly say, yes, it did help me in my communication skills and and basically giving me a foundation of how to um, communicate and articulate and pronounce my words to where it makes sense for everyone who's around me, regardless of who's listening. Yeah. And so and now you're here at SHRM and I know you're a chapter president. So which chapter of SHRM are you a president of? I am in the Louisiana state. So I am Northwest Louisiana SHRM president for 2022 and I'll be the president for 2023 as we prepare for our incumbent to take over. Wonderful. What a great honor to be able to, 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 to run that chapter. And it is. I, I got to imagine just hearing you talk and like that drive to learn and grow in your career. That's got to be a huge step in, in helping with that as well. It is. I do like the opportunity that being a, a local volunteer provides me. It gives me access to not only just um, what our local chapter is offering, but also we have a very strong and present state chapter. Um, so it gives me that opportunity. And then being in SHRM generally just gives you access to so much um, opportunities to learn and grow, to become credentialed in many areas to where you can really push yourself forward in your career. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of areas I know that the conference is covering. So, you know, I know this isn't your first time at the conference, but what are you excited to learn about this year? Like, what's what's the hot topic in, in kind of your HR space that you're like, I got to learn a little bit more about that? 
I'm going to be honest with you. Every time I come to these conferences, it's always my one thing is just to take something from everything. Even if it's something I already feel like I know, um, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I want to be someone who's continuously learning from in the room. So everything at term is something I'm taking away. I really like the, I went to the general session with uh, Johnny Taylor and I really like that um, crisis accelerates change and that we matter and you matter. Um, and so I'm really hoping that every session I, I go through kind of gives me or resonates something within me to where when I go back, I'm resonating change and I'm, I matter. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Those are great closing words to our interview. I'm so excited to have you on our show. And that, thank you so much for sharing that. That's some great wisdom that everybody, I think, listening can take, take with them. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us on Workplace MVP. R3 Continuum is a proud sponsor of this show and is delighted to celebrate most valuable professionals who work diligently to secure safe workplaces where employees can thrive.